Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Um, I think last episode we covered the Hell Plague Sword, and today we're going to be covering another uh, normal unique item known as Griswold's Edge. Uh, Griswold's Edge is one of those really weird swords that uh, I think almost made it into my my like top 10 worst unique items. Uh, but didn't quite make it in for a couple reasons, and uh, I think it was mainly because it does have some niche uses. Um, <clears throat> like, I'm not, I'm not uh, very, I'm not, I'm not gonna just throw an item into the worst unique list just simply because I feel like it's the worst unique. Like, I go through the process of looking to see if it has any niche uses, if anyone could get any kind of use out of Griswold's Edge. Um, and, uh, and I believe what I came up with was that Griswold's Edge did have some relatively niche uses, um, specifically for characters that already have knockback effects. Um, knockback is a bad thing for melee characters, but there are some melee characters that already have knockback, and it can be useful on those characters. Uh, for instance, if you were a lower-level barbarian who is using bash, um, if you are a kicksin who's using the early kicks that also knock back, um, I mean, there are some definitely some interesting choices uh, for this weapon, especially since it has pretty high damage, pretty high attack rating, and it's actually a pretty fast weapon with some additional fire. It's really just brute force, a brute force kind of a weapon. Um, the main issue comes into play with the knockback, rendering it rather useless uh, for skills like zeal. However, works very good for skills like charge. Uh, this is actually a very good charge weapon. Uh, let's go over the weapon together and we'll talk about it, shall we? So right off the bat, you'll see that it's a broadsword. Um, it does have a rather unique graphic. Um, if we can zoom in on it and take a look, um, it is red, has a serrated sort of an edge to it. And uh, you know what? Let's go. Let's go to the character screen real quick and take a look at the unique graphic because it definitely is pretty. Um, as you can see there, uh, just kind of a really interesting looking, almost like fire-like sword. Um, it kind of makes me think it should be what the Hell Plague looks like, but, you know, whatever. whatever. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, 48 str uh, strength requirement on this, which is relatively low, and most characters in normal difficulty will be able to utilize this just fine. Uh, level 17 requirement means you can put this on uh, before leaving Act 2. I do believe Act 2, you usually end up uh, a little bit higher than that by the time you've killed Daryl. Uh, but it's not going to be useful to you when you get to Act 2, which is going to be around level 14. Um, probably about halfway through Act 2, when you hit level 17, you'll be able to put this on and get some good use out of it. Um, on top of that, it also has a rather high strength bonus, which could be useful if you're a character who's uh, really lacking strength to put on equipment. Uh, like maybe you're trying to throw on like a full Saigons or something as a character that doesn't necessarily want to throw any points in a strength because I think like the highest piece on there is like 70 something and um, could help you out a little bit I guess we also have 10% uh, increased attack speed on here uh, which does make it relatively fast 120% enhanced damage which is 80 to 120% so it does have a pretty high variable there um, of 40% on the AD we also have 100 attack rating which is static we have 12 to 25 fire damage which is a pretty good for level 17 but it's going to wane off pretty quickly as you get into Act 3, Act 4, and then Act 5. Um, knockback effect on here, which is the clincher, and really causes this sword to be less useful than it otherwise would be. And then the 12 strength, which is, like I said, also good for helping you put on equipment. But remember that strength also gives you a physical damage bonus as well of 1% per point. Um, so we get 12% off weapon ED added to our overall damage from this sword. So not only do we have a pretty hefty amount of damage coming from the sword, we have a nice amount of attack rating as well as additional fire damage. Uh, we also get an additional off weapon ED from the weapon, which makes it a pretty powerhouse damaging sword. Um, so if you are, like, like I said, a charge paladin, a uh, bash barbarian, early on this can be actually really useful to you. Um, it's also, the knockback also doesn't affect things like smite, so if you're a smiter, you could potentially use this sword. It's not really going to have much extra bonus for you, but, uh, I mean, it, the knockback isn't going to affect you, uh, because it, knockback does not stack with smite, and smite already has knockback on it. 
Um, it can be upgraded also um, to a, the exceptional form, which I'm going to guess is probably going to be a pretty good upgrade. Um, in fact, um, I'm going to go ahead and like put in my bet that it is actually going to be a really sweet upgrade to level. Probably level 30 is what I would guess. Uh, maybe maybe even a little bit lower. It could be level 25, but it's going to be between 25 and 30, I would bet. Um, so let's go ahead and upgrade this from the normal tier, which is 15 to 30, 48 strength, level 17, to the exceptional tier, which is the battle sword at 35 to 74, 43 dex, 92 strength, and level 30. That's actually a really nice upgrade from tier 1 to tier 2. Um, 35 to 74 is really good for level 30 for a one-handed weapon. And um, the requirements didn't go up so high that it was unmanageable. 92 strength and 43 dex isn't too bad. Um, I've seen a lot worse. And, uh, and you could, of course, socket it with your Act 5 quest and throw something in there like a shale rune, make it even faster. Um, or you could put uh, something in there to increase the damage. I'm not really sure exactly what you'd do. Uh, the knockback does kind of preclude super fast hits, but knockback actually works really good with charge. I'm not sure if you guys have ever played around with charge before, but when you charge, there is a animation um, on the charge effect. So when you charge, you're charging around. When you hit a monster um, who is you know not going to die in the first hit, um, you kind of want them to get knocked back because it allows you to charge to them again. And uh, you can actually hit faster. Let's go to um, somewhere the monsters can actually survive. And hopefully I won't get murdered. And I'll kind of show you what I mean about the knockback. Um, when it comes to charging, the knockback is actually extraordinarily helpful in increasing your damage output because you kind of want the monster to get knocked away from you so that you can charge back to them like this. Um, it's actually really, really useful to have the monster get knocked away. Uh, and for, for reference, let me show you something that doesn't knock the monster back. So let me just punch and it'll hit our charge. Come on, get to charge. And what you'll notice is, is that because I didn't knock the monster back, the monster doesn't get hit as quickly. Like, the charge really kind of, like, relies on that knockback. It does have a knockback that will apply on its own sometimes, but it's only sometimes. And you really want it to apply all the time, and I think that's really the key, is that having the all-the-time knockback is definitely superior to the sometimes knockback. Uh, because once you're in melee range, once you're standing next to the monster, and the monster's not getting knocked back, all you're doing is just regular attacking at that point, um, which is different than the charge effect, which does a lot more damage in general. Um, all in all, Griswold's Edge is definitely a decent upgrade to the Tier 2, and uh, if that's all you had on your character, or you're using a very specific character, you could certainly get good use out of it. Um, the ethereal version, of course, can also be upgraded. Uh, the ethereal version is 22 to 46 damage, uh, 38 strength on level 17, and that also requires a Rowl, a Soul, and a Perfect Emerald. And that's going to go from 22 to 46, 38 strength level 17, to 52 to 112, 33 dex, 82 strength level 30. Um, not bad upgrades to tier 2, um, especially if you just wanted the extra damage or you needed a better sword. One of the things that you'll find if you play melee characters, especially melee characters that are highly physical based, is you're, you're very, very dependent on your weapon. Elemental damage characters are not so dependent on their weapons and equipment um, because they're skill based damage. But as a melee character, having access to even something like Griswold's Edge and being able to upgrade it one tier can actually make or break your character getting into a nightmare difficulty and hell difficulty and things like that. In fact, I've, I've played several melee physical characters um, that were basically stuck because they couldn't find a better weapon. Uh, so this could definitely be a weapon that could carry you from n normal difficulty into nightmare until you find something better. Uh, let's upgrade this to the elite tier because why not? And um, I always love to do this anyway, even if I know it's going to be terrible. Uh, so Griswold's Edge Battle Sword is going to upgrade to the Conquest Sword. Um, and it's going to go from 35 to 74 damage, 43 dexterity, 92 strength, level 30. 
to 81 to 116 damage, 112 dex, 142 strength, level 70. Pretty poor upgrade there. Uh, 116 for a level 70 item is actually really bad and um, just not worth it. Um, you would expect 200 or higher for a uh, for an elite level item of level 70 plus, and uh, it's nowhere near where it's supposed to be. Uh, the ethereal version also can be upgraded from 52 to 112, 33 dexterity, 92, 82 strength, level 30. To 121 to 173 damage, 102 dex, 132 strength, level 70. So very, very poor upgrade there to the elite tier because even the ethereal version isn't quite high enough damage to um, to mix with more damaging items. I mean, even if you consider the Plague Blade here, which is um, 151 top end, so 134 to 151, we've got 81 to 116, which is below the Plague Phase Blade, and the Phase Blade is one of the lowest damage endgame weapons. It's very fast as well, which is also something that this sword does not have. Uh, phase, phase Blades are negative 30, and the Conquest Sword, I think, is like at best negative 10. Um, so, you know, we're we're looking at completely different weapons here, completely different damage types, and this Conquest Sword is definitely not going to cut it in Hell Difficulty. Um, let's take a look over at Silo's Pen real quick and see where you could potentially find this item if you wanted to get your hands on one. All right, so here we are over on Silo's Pen, and we're going to be taking a look at bosses first. Um, and this is a really low-level item at level 17, so we're going to assume 50% magic find. And uh, we're going to try and find a boss that we can fight that um, will drop this for us around level 17. So we're probably looking at Act 2. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and restrict this to normal difficulty because I don't want to see all the high difficulties. Um, looks like Mephisto is our best bet at 1 in 234. That's a little late, but level 17 is toward the end of Nightmare Difficult, or, or sorry, Act 2. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, but by the time you get to Mephisto, you're probably going to be around level 20, like 22-ish. Um, you could also farm Diablo for this, but that's really late. Uh, let's see if there's any super uniques that are more around the level that you would want to be for this particular item. So what we're looking for is um, Act 2 zones. And, um, I mean, we've got Travancall, 1 in 10,000, not very good. Not a lot of good choices here from what I'm seeing as far as on-level monsters go. I mean, we've got the Diablo um, trio here, the Seal Pops. Uh, we've got Storm Tree and Lower Kurost. That actually might be a pretty good option. Um, I think those are our two best options right here. Storm Tree is uh, at Lower Kurost uh, entrance. He's always there. Uh, very easy to farm. You can just go to the waypoint, farm him over and over again. And then Battle Maids, Serena, um, she is inside the uh, Ruined Temple, which is also pretty easy to find. So you could potentially farm Storm Tree and Battle Maids, Serena over and over again to see if you could get your hands on this. And that's actually around the right level, believe it or not. Um, probably your best best options for on-level farming. Um, the Ancient Ka the Solus up here is in Act 2. But the main issue with Ancient Ka the Solus is he's next to impossible to find. Um, Ancient Ka the Solus is always in the false tomb of Tal Rasha. If you guys are unaware of this, there is literally, um, what is it, like uh, eight tombs or whatever inside of Tal Rasha's um, like, like, like burial grounds, right? Only one of them is real, okay? And all the other ones are like not really made very well, like they're knockoff tombs, but one of the tombs is a fake tomb that was they basically put their full effort into, and it's a full-size tomb just like the, the real tomb is. And it fools you because when you go in there, you think it's the real tomb. You're like, wow, this thing is massive. It's got to be the real tomb, and I've been traveling through this tomb for ages. Um, the fake tomb is the one that Ancient Ka the Solus is in. If anybody has like a guaranteed method on how to find Ancient Ka the Solus, I mean, feel free to put it down in the comments, but I've never really discovered one. Um, pretty much all I would ever do is uh, when I would kill him, it's usually when I was farming 
the tombs. So like if you guys uh, do EXP runs where you do tomb runs where you basically go through all the tombs, you will eventually find ancient Kavasolis in one of them. And I guess what you could probably do, which would be an interesting tactic, is you could farm the tombs and as soon as you find ancient Kavasolis, restart. And then just keep doing that over and over again. And eventually, you know, there's going to be ones where you're going to kill like every single tomb before you find Ancient Kavasolis. But some of them, it might be the first one and then you just restart. Um, you could get lucky, essentially. Um, Ancient Kavasolis is actually a pretty good uh, monster to that drops some really nice items. It's just sad that there's no like guaranteed way to figure out which tomb he's in. Um and that's pretty much it for trying to find this item. Most people are probably not trying to find Griswold's Edge, but if you did find one and you're interested in what its usefulness is, well, now you know. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and um, keep watching.